Hey, Magnus here, and uh, trying to go rush my way to the office because life keeps you busy and it's probably raining outside. But anyway, the point of this video is Magic Lantern. What magical thing has actually come out for the 5D Mark IV? Here we go. Behind you with like the clouds of sky and everything and still be able to we've see. got the Rode video mic. Here we go. M50. What do you guys think? Alright, so no big update on the 5D Mark IV Magic Lantern, but I want to give a shout out to Roy G. Biv to at least bringing it to my attention. Turns out that Magic Lantern, you know, the users, the community, the ones that develop for it, they've got some updates. And the updates revolve around the fact that they are able to boot some software off of the off of the Digic 6 processor, which is exciting because it means if you can boot the Digic 6 processor and actually have a couple of functionalities in it, granted, it still looks like they have a lot of work to do, but if they've got the functionality or the initial functionality, that means they're well on their way to proceeding, but they need volunteers that will sacrifice their 5D Mark IVs in order for this testing period, with a chance, small chance, but always a chance that something could go wrong. So, we'll see. And now, it's lunch break. I wish time could actually uh, span that fast. So, talking about the Magic Lantern, it's interesting because it's like, okay, now you want to start progressing the the development of the software so <laughs> progressing that development means you actually want the 5d mark IV to have a couple of more features make it interesting make it the camera to own when it comes to video but will it be able to do what we want it to do now what separated magic lantern from anything else and developed on the cannons is that it allowed for a lot of capabilities. Even on popular cameras of today, weren't capable. They weren't available unless you had pretty much a cinema camera. And if you didn't have a cinema camera, you weren't getting that type of support. Using Magic Lantern on a Canon camera is huge. Basically using Magic Lantern on a Canon camera, such as the 5D, Mark III or the Canon 6D gave you features that even some of the other cameras didn't give you. Now, HDR has become pretty standard on most cameras, but Magic Lantern had it before Canon was able to do it internally. I have the Canon 6D and it could do HDR. Granted, you had to do some tweaking in post, which is a little bit more legwork, but afterwards you can get uh, broader dynamic range with that HDR functionality. Also, with Magic Lantern, you could record RAW. Granted, in a much lower resolution on the 6D, but I believe you can get full 1080p RAW footage on the 5D Mark III. That in itself is something that is worth it. it, is worth getting that software, because if not, you needed to pay a much heftier price off of cinema cameras to get that raw recording. But, you pay that price now, and it's still a lot. 5D Mark IV is pretty expensive till this day, even though the camera's a couple of years old. I believe they just celebrated two years out. Came out in 2016, September, and now it's September 2018. Still a very capable camera, as I'm using it right now, recording in 4K, and this lens that I'm using, Perfect for selfie style, right? I think this camera works great for that. But what you have right now, especially with the Blackmagic Cinema Camera 4K or the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K camera, you have amazing ability to record high quality footage and get raw footage in a 
with a price tag that's about half that of the 5D Mark IV. That in itself, why not pick that up? Why would you need to pick up a Canon? Especially since the crop factor on the 4K makes it so that you are basically working with a sensor size that's smaller than an APS-C. Then again, the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K camera is micro four thirds, so that's still a little bit smaller. However, add a speed booster to the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K camera, and now you've got less of a crop factor than you do on the 5D Mark IV, which is interesting. So you got all that beefy camera in such a cheap setup. Though, when you add on the accessories, it comes pretty close. But if you're, the point is you want raw recording, why not go to that? Well, because if you add the Magic Lantern to the 5D Mark IV, you get the ability to record pretty much amazing color science, raw recording, and Canon's dual pixel autofocus all in one system. You kind of get the best of both worlds. You're not going to get the 13 stops of dynamic range, but you will get at least 12 stops of dynamic range with this sensor, which is not bad. Could be better, but not bad. And the, the flexibility of just editing that raw footage with an already great color science is just the icing on the cake. And don't, don't let me fool you into thinking that RAW is the only thing you get off of the, uh, Magic Lantern software. You get a ton of extra features that Canon coulda, woulda, shoulda have included, but didn't. And normally, when they could reverse engineer the thing. They add a lot of other features, such as focus peaking and uh, exposure levels while you're still recording. So that in itself is a plus, and why we'd be excited for those features on the 5D Mark IV. And I can say that Sony, Pana, they don't offer raw recording. Nobody really does, because these are meant to be kind of hybrid cameras, which they think a YouTuber, they're just gonna wanna record, maybe a lot of dynamic range, so we'll give them log, but more than that, not necessary, especially with the transfer rate that's usually built into these much cheaper cameras. If you do raw recording, you're gonna need fast transfer rates. But with CFast being standard, UHS-2, you can do high-res RAW recording. Even on the 5D Mark IV, which uses a UHS-1 SD card slot and a CF card slot, which are older uh, methods, I'm sure you can still pull off at least 1080p RAW recording. So why not offer that? I'll tell you why, because we want to protect the cinema line, right, Canon? And the other manufacturers, too. But they also don't feel that the populace is asking for it, wanting it, or needing it. But for someone like me, wanting to do that next-level cinema-style editing, which I have done, but don't have any cameras that out-of-the-box record raw recording, be nice to have an additional camera. I already ordered the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K, so that's coming up. But to get it out of the 5D Mark IV as well, oof, would be nice. Canon 6D, because I installed the Magic Lantern on this, the Canon 6D does do raw recording thanks to the Magic Lantern software that I got installed here, but at a very low resolution because of the transfer speed on the SD card slot doesn't support anything higher than that. However, I'm not your average user though. And most people that are looking to install Magic Lantern probably not are not your average users. So let's hope that uh, everyone who's supporting the, the um, Magic Lantern software keeps up the good work. Special thanks to A1EX on the Magic Lantern scene for actually working on the 5D Mark IV. And those that are interested, you can check out the posts. I'll, I'll link it in the description down below when it comes to how you can be a part of the community or help if you've got some programming experience. What he's looking for right now is someone to volunteer their 5D Mark IV to run tests. I would not do that right now, but if I had a spare, I probably would want to test it out. But right now, I don't want to risk it with the 5D Mark IV. But let me know what you guys think. Are you actually anticipating Magic Lantern software? Do you even care? Let me know in the comments down below. As always, like, share, and you can make my day if you subscribe today. This is Magnus, and I'm out. See you guys later.